everyone wants your time. That is what keeps their platforms going. They hire social engineers to create these platforms to make it addictive so that you can keep coming back and keep getting those dopamine hits. Hello everyone, today I want to talk to you about monotasking and how it can impact and change your life. Monotasking is doing one thing at a time instead of multitasking, which is doing multiple things at once or changing really fast between one thing and the other. And before you click away, I want to challenge you to stay to the end. I have seen more and more people with their attention spans becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. And it's due to the fact that more and more people are putting content and there's TikTok, which you can watch something for like 10 seconds and then there's shorts and then there's, there's so, so, so much out there and people's attention spans are becoming very very small and also their working memory is being affected as well so let's talk about what's going on um what is it that's going on so the average person is spending like four to five hours on devices um and if this is something that you can check for yourself you can check your screen usage on your phone um and you can check to see but that is the average and what people use their phones for, I mean, it's a multitasking tool. So people spend a lot of time on social media, TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook. There's so many. Can't keep up anymore. Um, they check their emails. Um, they listen to podcasts. Podcasts, is, they're huge now. So people listen to a lot of podcasts and YouTube videos like this one, right? And so people have this huge amount of influx of information coming in at all times throughout the day. Almost all of their free time is being allotted to scrolling through feeds and seeing people's vacations and their gardens and their salad bowls and their kids' activities and the sports and all the things, right? You're constantly seeing that on a daily basis. You're also constantly listening to other people's voices and the podcasters and the advice and all the things. And people will... Um, be working out, listening to something, washing the dishes, even in the toilet, waiting in line for things. They're constantly, constantly listening to other people's voices. But my question to you is, when do you have time to listen to your own voice? When do you have time to listen to God's voice? When do you have time to reflect and think for yourself and allow your own mind to think? We don't have much, a lot of time for that. Um, if that's what we're doing and uh, it really affects people in ways that they're not aware of and constantly living a life of distraction impacts your uh, nervous system your memory your attention it lowers your productivity because you think that oh you know what I can do two things at once no we were not designed for that it also depletes your energy. You're actually using more glucose from your brain when you're doing two things at once instead of one. Um, and it really, we really weren't created for it. In fact, uh, we kind of start breaking apart when we try to do two things at once. And I'm going to give you some examples as we go through this video. But um, everyone is competing for your attention. So all of these platforms... They're after your most precious asset, which is your time. Everyone wants your time. That is what keeps their platforms going. They hire social engineers to create these platforms to make it addictive so that you can keep coming back and keep getting those dopamine hits. And your time is your most precious asset. You can't get back last week. You can't get back this morning. It's gone. You can't buy more time. It is your most precious asset. And can you think about four to five hours a day, what you can do if you had that time back for yourself. You can learn an instrument, you can learn a language, you can go work out, you can take up a sport. There's so many things you can do. Uh, you can start a business, there's so many things. You can write a book, you can read books. So, so many things, but our time is being sucked in to these places without even us realizing that that's really how much time it's taking, but it is really taking that much time. So would you like to be more present every day? Would you like to have more energy, more attention, better memory, just feel better all about your life? Well, monotasking is going to help you. Let's talk about what are some things you could do 
to help with monotasking. So a lot of you guys ask me, how is it that you have five kids, you run multiple businesses, you do the YouTube thing, you write books, how do you do all that? How do you have time to do all that? Well, I had to get rid of a lot of things that I had to say no to. Um, number one, I owe all that I have, all glory be to God. He's the one that helps me with everything that I do. Number two, I have an amazing husband. He's a rock, he's a helper, he's a good man. Um, number three, it's monotasking. It's having scheduled time for things. I'm very overprotective over my time. So for example, for my school schedule, when I'm homeschooling the kids, I am not on a device. I am not listening to a podcast. I am not checking emails. I'm just focused on the kids. And as I focus on them, they are also focused. I, I noticed that when I was on the phone, when I was doing other things on the side, they would lose their focus and I would get angry with them. Um, I would be more snappy when I, you can do two things at once. You will start to break down. So that's one of the first things that I do. I have a lot of times for things. And when I'm doing those things, I am not bringing in other things that I'm doing on the side. I have scheduled a lot of times for my internet use so that I'm using it on my lot of times. And it's very, very helpful. And it helps to also set a timer so that, you know, let's say that your internet usage is from 1 to 3 p.m. Then you want to set a timer or set an alarm for yourself so that you know, okay, now it's time to turn it off. And there's liberation in that. There's freedom in that. We're done with internet time for today. Another thing that I want to share with you guys is that I have a flip phone. It's just a very basic phone. The smartphone is meant to be a multitasking tool. And so you do all these things on there and it's constantly sucking you in. Well, what I did was is that I wanted to separate things out. So I wanted to just have a phone to talk. So I used to use this for call and text. And I text very little on this phone because as you all may know, texting on this phone is hard. So I don't use it very much for that. I call people on the phone. I see people in person, things like that. Um, I found that when I had a smartphone, I was constantly... When I, whenever I went anywhere, I, I brought all these things with me that I didn't want to have access to because it, I was living very, very distracted. So now when I go out, I, I, if I want to take pictures, I have a camera. Um, I don't have to constantly be checking my email all the time. And it's fine and it's okay to be bored. And it's okay to have some inconveniences because inconveniences lead to growth. I think in this country especially, we are... Uh, very, very, very comfortable, and we don't see discomfort as a tool for growth, but it is. And so, a lot of people will shy away from something like this because, oh, they don't have a camera, or they don't, they can't listen to their podcast. But you know, it is okay to go without some things. It's okay. It's okay because it leads to growth. Another thing that we do here at home is that we have our computers stationary, so they can't move them around. Even our laptop is. Um, plugged into the ethernet so the kids have to go to that location and use it um, that way they're not bringing it to different places and they're not like let's say I'm gonna bring it to where I'm eating and I'm gonna be watching a video while I eat we try to stay away from that as much as possible because um, it just doesn't create good habits for the kids so the, the computer is uh, stationary is on, on the ethernet um, occasionally we will bring it up on the long table for a tutorial, an art tutorial that I want them all to see, things like that. But for the most part, they have to be on the computer, which is in a particular location in the home. We have two computers in two particular locations in the home. So that's really helpful as well because you can't, whenever you can bring the technology with you, you're, you're being able to stay focused on the task that you're doing at that moment. Um, so that way you're not constantly having... Um, a device on you that you you're constantly listening to podcasts all the time like when you're in the bathroom or you're walking you know totally that's not normal to live a life like that I think people don't realize that it's not normal to constantly be listening to other people's voices all the time throughout your day um, and not having a time for yourself to think for yourself if, if you just look at it, it's like you're constantly listening to other people's voices. They're constantly in your mind. And if you look at it that way, you're going to be like, wait a minute. I never, I never thought of it that way, but that is what it's like. And our grandparents never had to experience something like that, if you think about it. This is really a social experiment that's only been around for the last 20 years, where people are constantly 
inside other people's lives and inside other people's minds. Um, looking at all the things that they do on a daily basis, listening to other people talk. This is not something that our grandparents ever had uh, in their lives. And it, it affects mental health big time. It affects mental health. It affects so many areas of our lives. But these are the things that I use. You know, I have a schedule that I follow. I have scheduled time for whenever I'm going to use the internet. If I'm going to do my work, for example, if I have a lot of work time, I'm going to check my email during that time. I'm going to, you know, if I have something to do online for banking or for whatever it is, it's all there a lot of time. And of course, like if you need it, like if something turned out throughout the day and you need to go to your computer, then yeah, so I'll go, I'll go to the computer. But um, I, it's not something that you need to constantly be on, you know. Now, if you all want to know how I live life without a smartphone on a daily basis, like how I do GPS and how I do all those other things, right? Um, I can make a whole separate video on that. I have a, an older video that I made about two or three years ago on that a uh, little bit, but I didn't explain like, all the details. If you guys are interested in knowing how to live life without the smartphone, which is a huge help, um, let me know in the comments below and I will make that video for you all. Um, but I hope that this video has been helpful in just even bringing awareness to the fact that people are living distracted lives. Our times are our most precious asset and we only have a certain amount of time on this earth. Let's make it count. Let's do great things. Um, and let's build good relationships with our family, with our children. Um, because devices can ruin relationships. They really, really can. I uh, hope you have enjoyed the video. If you want to like see more from me, I don't go on YouTube all as much as I used to before. I work mainly more on my private community now. I have a private community where I work with moms um, and I make private videos for them. And I'll link that community below if you want to join me on there. If not, I'll see you all in the next video. Make sure that you're subscribed so that you don't miss my next video. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.